Well, hello there, babes, and welcome back to the, cha the channel Nail Struggles, where I try to eliminate your nail struggles by trying all the nail things so you don't have to. Nevertheless, if you are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. We thank you for coming. Come welcome, come to our family. Nevertheless, if you are oldie but goodie, you know that I love and graciously appreciate you for coming, for coming back to watch us at our little spice of the YouTube universe. So... Today, if you haven't already done, I think I said it, hit like and subscribe, but today we are going to talk about nail files and nail drill bits, which are some of my uh, favorite drill bits if we can, we're going to get into that. So how about we just dive right in to the video? The first thing that we are going to talk about are some nail files. I have a few different nail files here that I want to talk to you all about because I do get asked what it is I use and what's my favorite and things like that so these are these are just what you call your foam board files this is a 180 grit foam board file and you know the name speaks for itself because of the foam that's in the middle and it has basically a thick a thickness to it a medium thickness in my opinion uh, these particular files I like to use for hard gel because our gel is softer than acrylic and I find I do not need as an aggressive grit a file in order for me to file the gel into place. Now, if you don't know, I'm going to use this one for reference. This one says 100 180. 100 180 is the grit of the file which deals with the roughness, okay, the roughness and the texture of the file. So the lower the number, usually the rougher the grit, okay? The lower the number, the rougher the grit, okay? Now, this is a 100, 180, okay? Because you, when you have the files, this is actually a zebra file. I personally have not found too much of a difference between the zebra files, the white files, and the black files. My preference are the zebra files. I really couldn't tell you why, they just seem to work for me. But when you are prepping a prepping your nail, if you don't have an electric file and you're trying to remove the cuticle, the waxy substance on the plate and roughen up the nail a little bit before you begin your prep, you want to go for a file that has a 180 grit, okay? Uh, the, the least amount of grit that I would say go up to is 150, it's 150, but 180 is a safe bet, okay? Because I don't want you over filing your nails and filing too much off this 180 is really really perfect uh for for being able to prep your nails now there are different shapes of files um i personally love these long just rectangular files because i like of how i can hold the file and be able to get into there and do what i need to do okay but you also have your small little rounded uh files now this is an emery board file I tend to use this. This is actually this one is actually a 240 grit. So this one is much more fine than my 180 grit here. And the reason that I like this is not only using it for you know manicures and that because the grit is finer to be able to shape up the nail. I also like to use these periods sometime um, in a rougher grit for acrylic when I'm really trying to get on that side wall but really into the nail really thin. As you can see. You can see from the side, this emery board literally gets right up in there. I definitely need to do some file on my nails, but we've had a, a, a long week. Versus my, you know, my cushion board that has to go in here and I have to kind of force it to try to fit uh, up into the nail to get the close file that it is that I'm looking for. Now, these are 80 grit files, 8-0. I'm gonna show you what I usually buy. I buy the 80-80 grit files, which means they're 80 grit on both sides of the file. I tend to buy them, you know, two, three, 50 packs at a time. Do not do yourself a disservice by every time if you're doing your own nails, you're constantly using the same file over and over and over again. Do not do that. Do not be cheap. Just go ahead and buy yourself a pack of files for the simple fact that you, when you continue to use your file over time, you are going to lose the grit off of the file, okay? Which is going to take you longer to file your nail. It's going to take you longer to get your shape. And it's just going to take you longer all the way all the way around. So when you're done with that file, do what you're supposed to do from even a hygienic standpoint with other people. Throw this away. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm whooping you right now if you're keeping them files. Don't keep them files. Quit doing it. Quit, quit being cheap. 
buy yourself a pack of files start with a fresh file every single time trust me you will thank me later on because you will be able to use that to be able to get those sharper crisper lines okay this is just another uh file this one is a 100 180 in that as well that's a, a cushion round file that i like um I, I just don't prefer the uh black files i prefer the zebra or the white files they you know it, it hasn't been too much in a grid it's just the way that the, the paper is made but however those are the ones that i like um this is a buffer okay this is a three-way buffer block to be able to blend smooth and shine the nails i use these for manicures and these two are one use that once you use them to blend a, uh, a lot of the scratches and way in the nail the smoothing and the shining I, I love using these on my uh, male clients because i can use this in one service to be able to get their nails buffed to a high shine because you have a lot of men that don't like to wear polish and that's why i like to use these three-way buffers you can also find the same thing in these four-way buffing blocks that are on here but these you would have to hold and you can do like this which is easier i tend to like to use these and to be able to go in and do what i need to do and that's why i like the more of this you know triangular uh angled buffer so to say so those are some of um, my favorite files as well when it comes to buffing blocks you have seen me use a couple of different things um here on the channel here's just the the throw away little buffer blocks that i put on top of my pro sticks file to throw away there's also these small individual ones um i find these a little too small i usually will have to glue a couple of them together uh, to use sometimes i do use these in manicures because you know they're quite small and usually for some males fingers nails that are smaller i can get away with using these okay so or you can use buffing blocks um, but you don't want to, you don't want to really want to go too smooth on buffing because if you haven't figured that out yet, if you buff the nail too smooth, guess what? Your nail polish is going to peel off like a banana. All right there. Okay. So those are some nail files. So let's talk drill bits and let me show you what are some of my favorite drill bits to use. Okay. The number one drill bit that I like to use, and let's see if I can zoom in here, okay, is this cuticle clean bit. And you can see that it is very rounded on the top of the head and very small. I love this for getting around the cuticle when I am using my e-file or my electric, uh, my electric file. This gets that cuticle up off the plate, okay? This really does. This is used in every one of my services right after i push back the cuticles i come in and i use this cuticle file bit this one is by wilson you can find them on ally express they're usually two for nine dollars you can also find these on ebay but they're about seven dollars individually on ebay but this is in my service okay i replace these every month um they're very gentle they were originally designed to use for people who have diabetes believe it or not because it's such a gentle bit it doesn't cut it doesn't cut at all okay very 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 gentle um, the next the next bit that I like to use in my service when I am trying to get rid of shine off of the nail plate this is a mandrel bit okay this is a mandrel bit and this is a sanding band I use a sanding band that is 180 grit which is usually considered a medium grit sometimes these can be a little difficult to get on here and I'm also show you that uh, I have a pair of needle nose pliers here so that when I'm done with the service, I can usually attach this and go and pull it off, okay? Because these can be difficult to pull off. But I use these uh, to remove the natural shine on the nail relatively quickly, quickly at a speed of about 4,000 RPM, okay? Four to 5,000 RPM. You do not want to be using this on your natural nail at a very high speed. You are gonna just eat through those layer of nails like it like doesn't even matter. So I want to show you something different. Like usually you get these packs of drill bits when you buy an e-file. And let me show you what you probably don't want to use. If you see here, you can see that this, this bit here, this um, sanding band here, looks like it is covered in rocks, <laughs> okay? This is a very coarse sanding band. You want to stay away from this, especially on your natural nail, okay? Stay away from this because you're going to grind your nail down. It's going to be very thin, and in some cases, you might even bruise it or just, you know, grind the nail down. You know, it takes a while because the nail is supposedly had 80 layers. But stay away from this one in the kit. Do not use this one. I, I wish they did not put these in here because they put them in here, and then you think it's fine to use. 
The other one that's actually not that great to use is the smooth, super fine one. This almost does nothing in helping to prep your natural nail because it is way too smooth, okay? You need something right in the middle, and that's usually this thing right here and the one that I have here. That is a medium grit sanding band, which is right around 180 grit. These are the sanding bands that you want to use to be able to prep your natural nail, okay? Sometimes I, I can, you know, when you get a little more advanced, you might be able to use the rocky one in a finished filing of acrylic. <laughs> but if you are a new user, stay away from this rocky one. Don't do this one. Don't use it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it, okay? Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You hear me now? You're going to hear me in my ear. Don't do it, okay? Don't do it. All right. Something that I like to use in my finished file services. So I have a couple of different bits that I like to use in my finished file services, okay? These two are both by uh, Wilson, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're both by Wilson. This is a smooth top safety bit, okay? And this one is in a medium uh, grit. The reason that I like this is because when you have a safety top bit, um, I do still like to take all of my um, bits and kind of really quickly run them on the edge of a file when they're spinning in my electric file before I use them on anybody. Because the safety top bits are better if you are a beginner because it will help stop you from cutting, hopefully cutting yourself and cutting your client. So if you are brand new, get yourself some safety top bits, okay? Try not to go past medium. You could use um, coarse or extra coarse in helping to get the acrylic off the nail faster but I think what will end up happening and I've seen it probably a couple of hundred times most people drill too much into the nail especially when they have a coarser bit but this is one of my favorite bits the second bit that I do like to use is this one the same it's by Wilson I love this one this is the flat top small barrel bit in a medium grit I love this because this is what helps give me that clean flat cuticle edge as you see because I take this and I am literally able to get around there all the way around. But this is also a more advanced bit because you can cut yourself and your client. This is definitely, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. This is a bit as well. To season it, you wanna run it while it's in your e-file across a file so it can take off some of the burrs and the sharp edges that are on the top of this, this, um, this bit because if you don't, there are some snaggly parts that come off of it just from the machining process of creating these bits. But this is actually one of my favorite bits. Another bit that I do like to use, this is a rounded top bit. It's not quite, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. It's not quite, has a round, smooth top like my safety bit, but it has a rounded top, and it has less opportunity for you to cut yourself because this is considered a safety bit but I do like these to be able to get around the cuticle and to be able to pull the acrylic towards me in terms of ordering to finish uh, off filing the nail. Every once in a while, I might get gel polish, like if somebody's finger was turned to the side in the lamp and the gel polish runs and you're looking like crap. How am I supposed to get that off? Cause I don't want to stick a file in there cause it's gonna look crazy. I like to use these flat top diamond head drill bits. This is small and as you see, the head of it is uh, very, very small. I use these like if it just so happens, maybe if I paint it myself or the top coat ran off into the cuticle or to the sidewalls, I use this bit to go in to be able to clean up those mistakes, okay? Because it happens, you know? You have people that are putting their hands in sideways, you put your hand in sideways, you for whatever reason decided to paint the thumb first and then top coated all the rest of the nails and by that point the dog on top coat and ran to the side of your nails well sometimes you need a drill bit that will help you clean that up without giving you too many problems okay and i'm going to give you all some other options in that that will uh help you in your journey now i have a couple of these drill bits because this is last but not least these are some of my final favorite uh finishing bits in, in the service too these are actually from the brand panna and that's again p-a-n-a -A. they are off of amazon okay these bits are about seven dollars a piece i absolutely love them i actually buy the extra fine and i do season these on a file <laughs> and season the edge these things panna in general to me are sharper 
than what the the grit is that they tell you that the fi that the uh, the bit is okay these are way sharper these are extra fine supposedly and i would probably say these are closer to a medium grit but i don't mind it because when i'm trying to finish file and i'm trying to sometimes smooth out the nail i go in with these extra fine panna bits and i can smooth out the nail as if it were a medium grit bit okay so i thought i would show you um i also have let's see if i can find the last one but when I am removing acrylic, I need I need a real boy to go in there and take it down. These are tornado bits, okay? These are tornado bits. And this tornado bit is actually a extra coarse one that I bought from Koopa. And this one is a tornado bit that I believe I bought from Atwood Industries, but I accidentally popped off the, uh, the band, these little bands here. If you don't know, go get yourself a bag of these drill bit. Uh, bands these will stop the dust from going into your electric file that's what this little red band is here it's supposed to help to stop the dust uh, at least limit the amount of dust that goes into your e-file you put these you fit these over the drill bit but keep a bag of those buy a bag of those they're like five or six bucks buy them they will help prolong the life of your e-file but the tornado bits here if you notice they have flutes let's see if I can zoom in zoom in so that you can see this you can see how deep those flutes are okay they look like teeth all the way around i'm going to back this up a little bit this is what i want you to know about these bits you have to use these bits at an extremely high rpm okay my drill goes up to thirty thousand rpm i actually use these bits literally at about between 23 and twenty five thousand rpms because you need high speed to go across the acrylic to take it off so that those flutes are not constantly catching in the acrylic and if you are drilling it off the wrong way you're going to be drilling around your yourself or your client's nails and you're going to be bloody you don't want that okay and if you're doing it at too low of a speed that's why you'll keep catching it and then yourself or your client is going to be afraid to have the e-file used on them or you're using it on yourself and that is because you are not using things at the right speed. So I'm gonna recap the speeds in that of uh, some of the drill bits in it that it is that I have here. And it's funny, okay? So that you can see what are some of the speeds of the things that I use and why I use what I use, okay? So for in prep, the cuticle clean bit, I usually use this at four, about four, four to 5,000 RPMs when I'm cleaning off the cuticle around the skin. So that's that. The next thing that I have that I use is I use one of my mandrels and one of my sanding bands. Okay. This one is um, a little used, but I use my sanding bands to help prep the nail four to 5,000 RPM. You don't want to go high when you are trying to prep your natural nail. Okay. If that's for natural nail. Okay. When I'm doing a regular, you know, manicure service, that's a whole different story. When I am trying to remove acrylic, I use my tornado bits. I use these at, the, at over 20,000 RPM. I need high speed to help take down that acrylic and so that these flutes do not catch in the acrylic. When I am doing finished file services and I am trying to smooth out the nail, whether I'm trying to use my extra fine uh, bits from Panna or I'm trying to use some of my uh, larger barrel bits from Koopa in that, I tend to use these anywhere between nine to 11,000 RPM. It's just so much better. The speed is just high enough where it's going to smooth the acrylic, but not too high where it's gonna take off too much product, okay? And that's the same thing for the safety top bit in, in that as well if I'm using it in a finished file service. I usually don't go around more than about nine or 10,000 RPMs for this. When I am trying to clean up mistakes, like if the top coat or the polish runs into the cuticle and you have something left, I tend to use these at no more than about seven to 8,000 RPM, okay? So hopefully you all learned a couple things which are some of the favorite bits that I use in my service. Nevertheless, you know I love you. Go ahead and hit like or subscribe. And you know what I'm about to say, friends. Life is too short to wear boring nails. And so you come back now, you hear? And we're out.